Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is how I painted Lady of Birch Mountain. I use several media in addition to watercolor, including white gouache, pastel, and acrylic inks. Also used were a texturing technique with plastic wrap. Imagination and reality are both used to create this fantasy painting. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Now let's paint. I had an idea about a specific painting I wanted to try. Actually, it came from a dream. And since I like to experiment, I had a process in mind to set up. Usually when I start a painting from an idea or concept, I stretch two pieces of paper and try it two different times in two different ways. Because in a random painting like this, you never know when you're going to be successful, if at all. First thing I did after setting up all my painting materials was spray the papers down heavily with water. In order to block out some forms, I then tore up some scrap paper that was laying around and randomly dropped the pieces onto the paper. Onto these pieces, I then dripped black India ink. It really made cool patterns. Bit more ink and then some white ink was dripped on top. I picked up the whole sheet, tilted it back and forth a bit, and then heavily laid in some used plastic wrap. I did the same thing to the other side. And when the plastic wrap was all dry and the paper underneath, I pulled it off. This is what I got. You see the patterns where the plastic wrap imprinted into the wet paint and the wet paper surface. This is why I use this process, because you get random, interesting ideas. I took a photograph of each of the ideas and then set the whole thing aside until I could look at it from across the room and see if anything struck me as workable. Over the next couple weeks I kept looking at the paper and one day I saw a face start to emerge. It was a random set of features but they were very attractive. So at that point I went in with some white ink and some watercolor paint and some white pastel began to sketch and form the features of the face that I saw. And that will lead us to the next part of this section where I actually filmed the entire process on video. After finding the face, I then got out some white pastel and sketched in where I thought a body might go. Then I began negative painting or painting around the edges to bring out the, the figure and have some color come in and softly enhance my idea. The face I saw was a woman's face, and she looked very pretty. There was floaty white patches around her that had been randomly formed, so I used that for her hair. There was also a bright blotch of white ink on to the left of her head, and I left that stay as an indication of an orb or some other body of light because this seemed to be destined to be a fantasy painting.
working on a heavily figured and textured background such as I have created, I have to cover some of the textures up in order to make figures seen. So I then got out some white gouache. I diluted it so I could put it on in layers and slowly build up layers of white gouache onto the figure to form her limbs and her chest and her dress and her other parts so that the cheek would stand out against the background and not be heavily textured with black. Working between the background and the figure. I developed the idea that cliffs and rocks, craggy mountains, might be back behind her. And I like the idea of trees growing up from them. Since the background was so dark, I thought that white birch trees might shine out nicely against the darks. So I outlined that also in white pastel. Those are the lines that you see to her left. I was not looking at any images of a scene like this. The scene was mainly on the paper and in my imagination, but I was looking at reference pictures of birch trees, of dresses, of women's bodies in different positions, trying to get the anatomy correct, the collarbones and where I wanted her arms to be, how I wanted her to be carrying herself. So those were the references I was looking at in order to get the anatomy correct. but there really are no reference photos for what is in your imagination. Only the adjustments so that you can convey it more realistically or according to what your, your mind says is correct. In fantasy, there's nothing correct or incorrect. Anything could be. But I know that painting darks around a lighter figure makes the lighter figure stand out more. I painted this over the course of several months. My practice was to set up, find some things that seemed obviously needed, and then paint until they were done, and then set it aside and look at it across the room for several days to see what I thought might be next. And I was never really quite sure. So a lot of the painting was strictly by imagination and instinct. This is my white pastel stick and my eraser.
I'm also referencing some paintings that I had done in the past using white birch trees that I felt worked successfully against the background. Making the trees stand out strongly <clears throat> gave a, a striking impression against the darks with the very white trees. At this point, I was trying to mix my blacks using purple and indigo. And what I found was the paper having been so very wet when I sprayed it down initially loses some of its side, sizing so that it absorbs paint in a different way after that has happened. It seems to take many more layers to make the paint as dark as I want. But I do, I'm happy to make that sacrifice in order to get the textured prints that I get from the plastic wrap. One of the harder things for me is finding an accurate and very thin gauge pen to apply white ink. Here I'm using a drafting pen which works well some days and not others. It allows me to apply some very thin lines for branches. And the white ink is a somewhat thick product, so it tends to clog up the whole process. So here I've gotten out an old-fashioned ink pen, and I'm trying that. Again, the white ink is thick and opaque, and it seems to clog up the points of the pen very quickly. Sometimes I'll add water to the white ink to make it spread and flow a little bit more smoothly. However, this then also dilutes it and makes it not so opaque, which means I will be applying many more layers of white ink just to get it to flow out of the pen. I don't know if this is a problem with being a left-handed person or just if everybody has this problem because I think there are right-handed nibs and left-handed nibs. Here I'm designing a headdress for her and starting to detail her dress with tiny little dots, buttons, and lace. So I'm looking at a dress on a headless mannequin in order to find something with details that might be interesting. Nothing is being copied exactly I'm taking bits and pieces from many different ideas, as well as using my own imagination. When I'm using the white ink to shade, I frequently put down a line and then soften it with my finger. So then it becomes a highlight and not just a line.
Again, diluting the pen or the white ink with water to make it flow from the pen causes it to be not so opaque on the paper and that causes me to have to reapply it many times. It soaks into the paper and then it's not as bright. So for the majority of the shading or the highlights of her body and dress and hair, I used white gouache. A little easier to control with a brush. And now I'm developing some shadows, which will further make her stand out. As well as the white birch trees. You'll notice that the hands are not yet formed, or the entire arms. And now I'm finding where her dress is going to be, going down to the bottom of the page. When you are sketching a person and the paper is laying flat in front of you, <clears throat> I strongly advise you to get it up vertical and step away from it periodically because the figure becomes quite distorted laying flat on a table. It will appear elongated. When you get it up vertical, you get an accurate view of the person's body or the figure so that you could see if your anatomy is correct or not. And when it really looks perfect laying flat, you may be very sadly surprised if you think that you're done with it because it does not look right when it's vertical until you've made the correct adjustments. And you'll see me do that further into this video. At this point, I'm working around the dress and the figure and putting in random lights, darks, and colors according to what feels right to me. Now, looking at the place where I'd thought the hand should go, I realized after propping it up vertically that they were wrongly placed. They were too short. The arms were too short. So my next step was then to find the halfway point of this figure and to draw it going off the page and right onto the board. So then I could find where the thighs, the knees, and so on were and place her fingertips halfway between her hips and her knees, which is where the fingertips usually fall on a human figure. So I had to take the hands off by painting the gouache with a damp brush and lifting it, and then reposition where the hands were with the elbows falling at the waist and the fingertips falling halfway to the knee, part way down the thigh. And this felt much more accurate after it was placed. And you could see my reference lines in pencil, which will be erased later. I have to be careful to make sure that the hand is large enough as well. My tendency is to make hands too small. And your hand should extend from your chin to your forehead. If you hold it up in front of your face, you'll see what I'm talking about. 
Your hand is about as big as your face. I'm using white gouache mixed with watercolor paint. Burnt sienna is a good color for skin, but it needs warmed up with some reds or some roses. So that's what's in my mixture. And I'm forming out the arm and hand with that. I can then shade on top of it. The accuracy that you require for your human figure when you're painting one is up to you entirely. In this case, I needed her to be standing in a way that looked both relaxed and natural, and yet I wanted the anatomy to be fairly accurate. A fairy woman can be slightly exaggerated, of course. And so can a normal human, but it depends on what you're looking for in your painting. And we're certainly all built very differently. Painting down and bringing the figure out more and more with darks around her and lights within the form. You could see her getting more and more formed and where she is actually going. Far better now at this point than you could earlier in my painting. So I'm turning next to the background and what's around her. Looking at one of my older paintings that I particularly liked. And forming rock formations. To suggest that she is up in a mountainous area. If my light source is primarily coming from my left side, from that odd orb to her left of her head, then my darks will be primarily on the right side as well as lower down in the painting. So I'm shading the rocks and the cliffs with darks on the right side. Although this is not a realistic painting, obviously. I could put the shading anywhere I wanted. And I'm bringing some more color into the background as well. In most cases, I'm trying to use the lines that were actually formed by the plastic wrap for the sake of adding the randomness that the plastic wrap created and using what's already there, which tends to feel sort of natural to me when I paint in this manner. Forcing it way beyond what was already there makes it sort of pointless to use the plastic wrap in the first place. But if I can paint around the textures and use them, and they show in the rocks, I think it adds a natural and spontaneous feeling to this type of painting. It also gives me some ideas about how to direct it. And then I decided I needed to put in another 
white birch tree. So I'm binding it right now with my white ink and gouache. Plotting its course. One of the reasons I decided to do this was the area in that section looked a little empty. But another reason was Many artists like to paint groups of odd-numbered things. I had four trees there, so I decided to make it five trees. Why odd? I don't know. It seems to add a feature that is attractive to a painting. And now I'm painting around the background with dorks and bringing out the lights by doing so. At this point I am using black watercolor peat. I decided to give up trying to be realistic in my colors because it was a fantasy painting after all and black seems to be appropriate when you're painting fantasy as well as anything goes. After adding more dark, I'm coming back in with my opaque white ink to put another layer of light on. You can see where I'm putting it. It appears much brighter immediately because I do have at least three layers of it. At this point, it begins to retain some of its lightness and not all fade because of the washed out siding, sizing of the paper. I'm flowing the dress down further, but doing so in a manner that's suggested rather than spelled out. It occurred to me that perhaps there was fog or mist coming up over the lower part of the painting to semi cover the figure. So I'm keeping the bottom less developed just to add an air of mystery and maybe some mist. And then at this point it all becomes a question. How much do I want to bring out and how much do I want to take back and subdue? It's just a kind of balance. And I frequently got puzzled at this point about exactly how to end it. So I would put it aside for several days and then look at it again and decide from there. I also asked the opinion of other people that I respected, artists as well as friends and family members. If you're anything like me, your friends and family members have been asked many, many times for their opinions and their reactions. To the right of my painting, I've written notes for myself about things that I thought I should do that day in that painting session. So step by step, I'm going over them and checking them off my list. It helps me while I'm evaluating to write things down. I don't always follow my own directions or what other people think, but I certainly can then give them consideration as I go instead of forgetting about what I was thinking.
I decide to suggest that the white birch trees move up to the top and go off the edge of the paper. I'm not painting darkness around them, but rather letting them fade in and fade out. Doing some more accent work around the white branches by painting darks under them and the white birch trees by painting darks into them and beside them. And adjusting the side of her body where her hand falls and her arm. Adding some Viridian green. And to really try to make those darks pop, I actually got out a bottle of acrylic black ink. And I'm using that in the hopes that they will stay truly as dark as I would wish. I'm using them with an ink pen. And this black ink flows a lot more nicely and easily than the opaque, thick white ink. So it's working quite well with my ink pen. Bringing up a close-up of a woman's face, I then worked a bit on her eyelashes and decided to hit the white opaque acrylic ink one more time with my ink pen to get that electric white sharp line that I want for the birch branches because it feels a little magical to me as well as the strong white highlight on her shoulder, the side of her dress, and the sides of the birch trees. To the right side on my masking tape, I have white gouache blobbed on and I'm mixing water in to reconstitute it and to make it thinner. And I'm bringing up the misty feeling at the bottom of the figure a little bit. Final adjustments are going on at this point, and I sign it because it is done. I hope you enjoyed my video, Lady of Birch Mountain and that you will subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. There are links to the products I use in the description box below, along with links to my Facebook art page and my blog, as well as my product gallery. As always, your comments are very welcome, and I'll see you next painting.